Okay guys, first of all, the math on that doesn't add up, but then also remember how in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue? Was he a vampire? Like, was he a time traveler? Good morning, welcome back to the Cafe Classroom and happy Friday. This is one of those weeks that like both seemed like Friday would never come and like I woke up this morning and I was like, oh it's, oh, it's already Friday. <laughs> Where did that come from? It was like this weird dual thing happening. Anyways, so I'm excited today to show you what my sophomores have been working on this week. If you missed yesterday's vlog, all about what my freshmen have been working on with the beginning of To Kill a Mockingbird, I will link that for you right now. Um, And, oh wait, this way. Beep, there it is. And... I am going to run you through what I've been doing this week with my sophomores because while my freshmen have been working on To Kill a Mockingbird and building context for that time period um, and for the South in the 1930s and Jim Crow and civil rights and all that encompasses To Kill a Mockingbird. Well, not all because how can you do all, but you know what I mean. Um, while my freshmen have been diving into that, my sophomores have been looking at how to judge the credibility of a source. And there's a whole thing called the crap test that comes from Chico State's for those of you who teach uh, research and that kind of stuff will probably already know what I'm talking about, but I'll show you how I'm implementing that strategy to finding the credibility of a source. And today I'm excited because I was out of the classroom yesterday. I had a pullout day yesterday. So I'm excited to see what they think of the film that they watched yesterday. I will check in with you guys in a little bit, but I'm excited to see. What Hello. So you guys, it's Saturday again and I'm back in my classroom. If you saw my vlog, one of them last week, I'll link it. I came in on Saturday to finish up my classroom vlog because I was finishing up work and the same thing is happening here. Yesterday, Friday, I just like hit the wall about 20 or 30 minutes into my prep period and I just like could, couldn't. I like couldn't think anymore. So I went and I had some conversations with some of my colleagues that I like could have emailed, but we're going to be better and more effective and just like better communication in person. So I went and like took care of that for the rest of my time. And I like thought all of a sudden I was gone from school. It was the end of the day and I left and I was like, oh, I never, I never actually went over what I was doing with my sophomores having to do with uh, evaluating source credibility. So here is like the lowdown. Last, this last Monday, it was the beginning of the quarter, and so my sophomores, we started with just some stations, talking about how to evaluate sources, why we did a little, like, I kind of front loaded with like why you would need to evaluate a source and talking about the game of telephone that happens and that human nature is just too naturally, like people don't always, I'd say normally, you can assume goodwill and that people don't mean to exaggerate information and they're not intending ill will when stories get a little misconstrued. However, new sources have to make money so they need people to click on their website or buy their publication and we just kind of talked about why information gets twisted and exaggerated, how information gets twisted and exaggerated and the implications thereof. Just a little Quick discussion, nothing too crazy, because then I wanted to start getting into how to tell the credibility and the evaluate a source for the, and how to evaluate a source for the quality of the information that it is providing. So what I did, we started with identifying bias and they all got a sheet that looks like this and it's double-sided because they had five stations to go to. And the first one was called station one hashtag fake news. And let me actually pull up the slide so that I can remember what I did. Because, you know, five days ago was like a really long time. It was a long week. They're all long weeks. Like, who am I joking? Where even is it? That's the question. Oh no, send help. I've lost my mind. Aha, okay. Um. You know what, I'm just gonna show you guys what it looks like. So here was the slide that we had, and I just, I found myself, you know, kind of kitschy calling it fake news. I thought I was adorable. And they had about 10 minutes. I ended up having to extend it a little bit because I thought we were gonna get through all five um, stations, but just as it is when, you know, the first time that you teach something, you never quite know what's going to happen. So the question is, where is my mouse? Okay, there we go. So. Their first station was about fake news. How do we know when information is reliable? What is fake news? I had them follow the link and do a little looking at this article from the Merriam-Webster Webster Dictionary. 
website, the real story of fake news. And so I had some Chromebooks just set up at all the tables. They scrolled through that and then, because their instructions were on these slides, and then they were just answering some questions on this sheet that I gave them. Like, what is fake news? Where does it come from? How are new terms added to our vocabulary, such as like fake news and that sort of thing? So their second was to look at a website all about Christopher Columbus and to fact check the website. Like, fact checking, things that they knew from like elementary school and things that they learned about Christopher Columbus and then looking and like, there are things that say he was like born in 1942 and he died in 1906. And it's like, okay guys, first of all, the math on that doesn't add up, but then also remember how in 1492 Columbus sailed the ocean blue? Was he a vampire? Like, was he a time traveler? And it was funny to see the different timings at which students like caught that, right? And then they, they you just, their minds were like, what I found on the internet isn't true, but it looks real because the website looks credible enough. So station number three was a website called studentnewsdaily.com. And there's this whole like section of their website on conservative versus liberal beliefs. And so what they had to do is look at, oh my gosh, there were like 21 issues listed in there. The conservative view, the liberal view. And I mean, some, some of the views are a little extreme, but I mean, with something like abortion, yeah, views are going to be kind of extreme. It's an extreme issue. Um, and so I had my students simply write down the title of every single issue and then put a C for conservative, an L for liberal, or an M for in the middle, like moderate, depending on where they felt themselves leaning with the beliefs that were outlined on this website. And then we debriefed a little bit of that because they found it very interesting to see like, oh, I didn't actually know what affirmative action is. And I'm like, well, yeah, a lot of you guys don't know what this stuff is, but you hear about it in the news. Station number four and station number five were from the same website. Um, and basically they had to do the same activity with both stations. One was headlines and one was photographs from news publications and they had to just look at the headlines for station number four and based on what it said in the headline determine what they thought the article was going to be about and then they had the opportunity to click through the link and see what the actual article was about and like see where there was disparity and where the headline was leading them to believe and what it actually was and then answer some questions and then station five was pictures from the exact same website and by the way all of these activities, except for the very last thing, so all of these station activities, I got from an amazing article on, or like a blog post on We Are Teachers, which I will totally link down below here, because all I did was adapt this and put it into slides and make it into stations and create links for my students to find this stuff. But the writer on We Are Teachers is the one who really did all of the work. So like, I can't take a whole lot of credit for this, but I am so grateful to have found it. So thanks guys, you really did me a solid here. Appreciate you. Anyways, so four and five headlines and then photographs. And then I called it station six, but I ended up not having them actually do this last part as a station. What I did is I, ha I found a few opinion articles on Newzella because Newzella has those great text dependent questions that go along with, and you can find like, appropriate, like le uh, Lexile appropriate texts and you can find them in different Lexiles. So I, I, um, I found them all at like a 10th grade reading level and I just mixed up the papers and just at random handed, you know, each student one of the three possible opinion essay articles that I found, I'm not speaking well, uh, on Newzella and I had them annotate looking uh, you know read through the article and annotate looking for signs of bias and then answer the questions and so they ended up having to do that for homework on like Tuesday night because like I said these stations we started with the first three stations on Monday and then they did two more stations you know everybody did them at different times because they were rotating around the room and then the end of class on Wednesday I ended up handing uh no Tuesday I ended up handing out the articles had them go home you know start reading in class go home finish and we came into class on Wednesday and we started with these articles and I said, okay. And I put them into groups with like articles. So I had three, oh, my phone's going insane, sorry. Um, so I had three groups across the room because I had, you know, like just little segments within three areas across the room because I had three different articles that they had read. And I said, share your annotations. And then as a group, I want you to agree on a scale of one to five, what is the level of bias and bias towards what? Uh, that of this article so like one being very low. This is straight-up facts. This is this is data There's no way to sway any of the information 
up to five, some of this might be fabricated. Like it is so biased that it doesn't even sound real. And it was interesting to hear their reasoning because then I got to flit around from like group to group as they were discussing this and say, you know, tell me what your rating is and explain to me why. And like they were showing me the text. It was just a really cool way because the articles were about head injuries in football. They were about um, kids being active enough in school. And one was about the latest uh, Fantastic Beasts being racist. So like there was a good spread of different topics, one about school specifically, one about like school and professional sports, and then one about movies and a, and a franchise of movies that this generation is extremely familiar with, Harry Potter. So um, we had some good conversations about that. So that was Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then on Thursday, uh, end of the day Wednesday, I started talking to them about different areas of the CRAAP test, which is C-R-A-A-P. It comes from Chico State. And let's see if I can do this off the top of my head. Credibility. Oh no, I already can't. Wait, I have it printed. Nope, it's not credibility. This is why I give my kids reference sheets because if I can't hold the information in my head and this is my job, how do I expect them to hold all the information in their head? So CRAAP stands for currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose. We talked through the first four, currency, relevance, accuracy, authority, and then we talked about purpose, and we talked about satire and parody, and how we have so much of that kind of humor that is very popular in pop culture and has been for a very long time, and that a less savvy consumer of information is not necessarily going to be be able to identify all things that are satire as satire. So we talk about the purpose of satire and identifying satire. That led us into, wait for it, wait for it. If you follow me on Instagram, I posted about this in my stories yesterday. We watched one of my all time favorite movies and they took legit notes because it is a historical-ish satire. And we, I had them write down a whole bunch of different topics that were gonna come up in the movie. And then their job while watching was to write down what is the joke, how is the joke being made and how could it be misconstrued by a consumer as fact. Uh... We watched Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> It is nice to have teenagers because they, it's such a dry and then at the same time slapstick silly humor, but it was a great like foray into what we did on Friday. So, okay, they watched this movie and most kiddos from this generation have not seen that movie. 10 years ago, showed this movie, same sort of a lesson that I was doing and like more than half of my class had already seen it because they saw it with their parents. It's just kind of a funny like, oh, P.S. This is PG. I'm not, I'm not being crazy. This is a PG film. Uh, just a little cover my butt situation. Um, so they watched it, they took notes, came back. We had to finish the last like 10 or 15 minutes of the movie and they were like dying laughing. Not everybody was dying laughing, but those who were, it like, it created that, that fun infectious giggle in our classroom and to be able to like have fun and bond and now they're all like quoting like the Holy Grail, like Monty Python. I, I just, I love being able to bond with kids and watching them bond with each other is a, is a like class. It just like warms my little teacher heart and it was a great way to start my Friday, I'll tell you that. So then we talked about, okay, what was your favorite part of the movie? Now let's break down the jokes. Like how were they making fun of the Knights Code of Chivalry and why, was that something appropriate to be made fun of and blah, 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 and like the Knights of the Round Table, what did they say about that? What did they say about, um, just about the, the different things that come up. And then that led us into an activity that I adapted once again from a different source. This is from the New York Times has that offshoot called the Learning Network and they have these really great lesson plans, but some of the lesson plans are kind of old. And so like the, this is a lesson plan that I used, oh my gosh, probably like seven or eight years ago when I taught English before. Um, it's all about exploring satire and basically it has, I'll link it down below, the original, and then I have like an adaptation that I'm gonna put on my blog. Um, so if you are not already subscribed to my newsletter, do that, sign up, because you can get this for free. Um, just the way that I had students do it too. Basically, I, Students are in tables around the room and each table gets one of five different satirical like um, infotainment news sources. And those different sources were, what did I give them? I gave them Weekend Update from Saturday Night Live. So they had a link to go and look at that. I said, oh, 
my paperwork's not quite right. This says The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. <laughs> you can tell this is a little dated. <laughs> but then the link that I gave them was with Trevor Noah. Uh, the Onion Clickhole, which is a website that is run by The Onion, and then Borowitz Report from The New York Times. So, or I'm not New York Times, from The New Yorker the humor section of the New Yorker. And I gave each group their like assigned satirical infotainment source. Um, we talked more in depth about satire when we were like going over our Holy Grail notes. So they had a little bit, a few more tools and lenses through which to look at these. And then I had a whole list of different questions that they needed to be taking notes on and answering in their composition book as they were looking through these sources. So this leads us to where I am right now, Monday tomorrow. We are going to share out about what they found out about their news sources, about these satirical sources for infotainment, where the truth is, where, like how the purpose of something, right, back to this craft test that I'm talking about, um, how purpose of information can help the consumer or the hearer of the information, right? Because we also equated it to, okay, when you go out to break right now, a friend of yours is going to tell you something that happened in first period or a story or something that they saw on Snapchat. How are you going to take that information? Are you going to take that as fact? Or are you going to run it in your head through some elements of this crap test, right? So I'm like really adding it back to what they actually do. I'm talking a lot, um, which is nothing new. So Monday, when they come in, we are going to talk about their satirical news sources. Like I said, we're going to break that down. Just do a quick little share out, probably be in a community circle when we do that so that we can like really relate it to real life stuff and like, why this is important, why, why skepticism really is a skill <laughs> that you need to be able to have. Um, and then they're going to do a crap test rumble, which I will vlog all about on Monday, but it is a really cool idea and it's like a silent ride around activity where they go from table to table. There will be sources on each table with big pieces of butcher paper that they're going to write their thoughts on and I'm excited to tell you all about it because then they're going Tuesday straight into a research project for Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, and then they will be presenting that research on Friday. So until then, stay tuned. Lots of cool things coming. To Kill a Mockingbird is moving straight forward with my freshman, and I will tell you guys all about that next week. Until we meet again, thank you so much for watching. If you've not already subscribed to my channel, please take a moment to do so. Hit the bell if you want to make sure that you are alerted when these things are coming out because I'm doing a much better job of balancing telling you exactly what's going on in the classroom, stuff that's going on at home, being a teacher mom, how to do life. It's a little scary sometimes, but we figure it out. Oh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye!